Hello everyone, I'm Juan Bermudez and I am in Physics 2325. I am going to explain how many stair steps I have to climb in order to burn off a Twix chocolate bar. Okay, uh, so in the back of the wrapper it says that each Twix has 250 calories per bar. And what is a calorie? So a calorie is just a unit of heat energy. And we think of this problem as this, the more calories you eat, that means the more work you have to do to burn off the energy that you consume. So the more you eat, the more your body conserves energy. And we think of our body as a system. And in order to burn off this excess energy, the system has to work. We have to get up and run around. In this case though, we burn off the energy by climbing stairs. And so, one big cow is equal to 4,186 joules. So we're going to convert the 250 calories to joules and that gives us 1,046,500 joules and so in this case since we are trying to find out how many steps it takes to burn off this candy bar we need to relate the heat added by all those calories we ate which are now in the form of joules and we need to relate that to our work equation because we are doing work by climbing up the stairs and as we do we are burning off that energy that we consumed and we do that by using the first law of thermodynamics which is u the change in u is equal to q minus work where u is a change in internal temperature q is a heat added and minus the work and this totally makes sense because when we think of our body as a system because Q is a heat added and we added those calories to our system and it's minus the work because as we exercise we are burning off the calories U is zero and this is purely mathematical because we are trying to find the steps needed to burn off the calories and so Q is equal to work and work is MGH so I solve for H because H is a height of the stairs and at this point I ask myself how many stairs do I have to climb in order to burn off the chocolate and the answer is 1271.25 and first I divide the heat, uh, these are the, the, my mass which is 84 kilograms and gravity and 1,271.25 meters is what is given because H is in meters and so I, just, I divide the, the meters which is 1,221.25 I divide that by 18.18 .18 meters which is the size of one step in height and so it takes 7056.94 steps to burn off this uh, candy bar. Hello everyone, I'm Juan Bermudez from Physics 2325 and I am going to explain a collision between a bullet and a block. So what is going on here exactly? Well a bullet that has, has been fired and it has a certain velocity and it also has a certain mass and a moment later bullet will impact with this wooden block which has an even bigger mass and as a result after the collision the block will move backwards uh, this event is an inelastic collision and an inelastic collision is when two objects stick together after they both run into each other well say one object has a higher velocity than the other and so it carries the other with it and so they stick together also an inelastic collision is not always conserved and some of that energy is lost to thermal friction their energy is just converted to heat and it is given away to the surroundings and so I described the, the inelastic collision of this bullet running into the block uh, with the conservation of momentum which is here, P initial equals to 
he find him. And here, and momentum is equal to m1 times uh, v1 and m2 times v2. That is just momentum. And in this side of the initial momentum, I cross out uh, m2 v2, which is the mass of the block before. And that is zero because the object is at rest. And for the inelastic collision, when the bullet uh, collides with the block, that is this right here, which is m1 plus m2. And that is the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block. And this is v prime, which is the velocity of the entire object after the collision. And so, uh, here we are asked to find V prime, and V prime, when we solve for it, is just M1 V1 divided by M1 by plus M2, which is the mass of the bigger block. And I simply divided M1 plus M, uh, M2 from both sides, and this is the result. And so... We want to find V prime, and by plugging in our values, uh, if we want to solve it quantitatively. Uh, I used 0 0.008 for kilograms for the bullet, that is the mass of the bullet, and the bullet was traveling at 441 meters per second. And I divided that by the mass of the bullet and the mass of the block, which is point, uh, 1 kilogram. And V prime, the result of the velocity after the collision, was. 3.5 meters per second. And so we stated that in an inelastic collision, energy is lost in the form of heat and in the form of thermal energy that escapes into the surroundings. And we are going to find the heat generated by the collision. So this is the heat before the collision and this is the heat after. and this the 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 initial heat is uh, equal to the first kinetic energy that is before the collision of the bullet, and the the kinetic energy final is just uh, the the sum of the kinetic energy final that is uh, the the heat final, and that is of course after the collision the and so so we saw for Q which is now the negative kinetic energy final plus the initial kinetic energy so this is the sum of the of the inelastic collision the momentum final which is m1 plus m2 and v prime is the velocity that we saw for initially and that is negative one half and this is the kinetic energy as the equation holds uh, one half mv squared and this is the kinetic energy final, one half m1 v1, and this is the mass of the bullet, and this is the initial velocity of the bullet. And so we substitute in our values, and this is the mass of the inelastic collision, m1 plus m2, 1.008, which is the mass of the block plus the mass of the bullet. And this is the v prime, which is the, the final velocity that we solved for. Uh, 3.5 meters per second and this is just the mass of the bullet and the velocity of the bullet and so heat generated uh, after a collision is 771.25 joules we are now asked to find the temperature rise of the bullet after the collision and that is because the bullet itself absorbs the energy at the moment of impact so when heat is absorbed, we use the equation Q equals heat capacity times mass times the change in temperature. And we are looking for the change in temperature of the bullet after the collision, so we solve for the change in temperature. And that is Q, heat, divided by heat capacity times mass. And we substitute our values for heat, which is 771.25 joules. And 128 joules per kilogram Celsius is the heat capacity of the bullet and times its mass is 0 0.008 kilograms. So we, once we solve for T, we get 753.17 degrees Celsius and 
due to the collision of the bullet, uh, the temperature changes to this. And last, we are asked to find the acceleration of the block after the collision. At the moment of impact, uh, the block moves back by the velocity of the bullet, so the, the bullet pushes the block back and there is friction acting opposite of the block and the block has a normal force up and the mass of gravity which is uh, opposite to normal force so the block is pushed down so here when we try to find the normal force and that is equal to mg and we solve for acceleration using the force of friction and the force of friction is equal to the normal force and so the uh, the normal force is the force of friction uh, the coefficient of friction is uh, u times mg and the force of friction is opposite the motion so it's negative ma and it, that is equal to the coefficient of friction times mg but we we cross out the m's because uh, they cancel out in each in each side of the equation and so the acceleration is equal to uh, the coefficient of friction times gravity and when we substitute our values we get negative uh, 0.30 which is the coefficient of friction times the gravity and the result is 2.94 meters per second squared for the acceleration that was being pushed back by the bullet and so this concludes my presentation hope you guys enjoyed it peace